19 news now the Johnson and Johnson vaccine can stand up to the Omicron variant. That's according to a Sasonke program researchers who presented the world's first evidence on the jab's efficacy against the variant yesterday. Less than half the participants in the study had received booster shots and of course uh, this is all about uh, how Johnson and Johnson works. It's good news because a lot of our healthcare workers were in that study to discuss what we're joined by the director of the Desmond Tutu H HIV Centre and Health Foundation, Professor Linda Gale Becker. Uh, Professor, thank you for, for being with us. So am I right to say that the majority of, of the people in the study, if not all, uh, were the first ones to receive the vaccine in South Africa? They got J&J and that's our health workers. Correct. Um, and of course, we saw that J&J held its ground against beta and delta. And the question was, you know, did we see a drop off in effectiveness against Omicron? And so it was important to have a look. And we have done so with the two doses that the doctors have now, and nurses and other healthcare workers have now received. And uh, of course, important to reassure that cohort that uh, we saw a maintained vaccine effectiveness, even against Omicron. How did the subjects fare if they had received one vaccine as opposed to two? So we looked at the one dose uh, against beta and delta so far, and certainly we saw a very good vaccine effectiveness. We haven't yet done that analysis. That is the durability analysis that we actually are um, undertaking at the moment. Uh, but it, we felt it was very important to reassure uh, the individuals who'd come for boosts. And so that study was done. It is important to note that obviously it was a very short term look. We had only had uh, the boosters on board for uh, for the maximum of two months in uh, in many of the individuals. But we saw an 85 percent reduction of hospitalization in the individuals who got two doses of of. J and J, and this is important because a lot of people were concerned about whether they should be getting a second J and J or whether they should go for an mRNA. And so we really wanted to reassure our colleagues um, as quickly as we could. All right, so so it gives peace of mind to anyone who has a Johnson and Johnson vaccine and uh, then may have gone for for the booster. How does it compare though against Pfizer, which is the other one that South Africa offers? Well, we used um, a database coming out of a large medical um, management uh, practice in, in the country that, well, to be clear, it was actually Discovery, which is the managed health care scheme that a lot of healthcare workers belong to. Um, and they did look a little earlier at uh, the performance of Pfizer, two doses of Pfizer, um, and source maintained vaccine effectiveness, albeit a little bit lower, actually, than the 85% we saw with J&J. So suffice to say, comparable maintenance against hospitalization. The viewers will know that we're seeing breakthrough infection with even in the face of vaccination. And we know that our vaccines aren't 100% foolproof to stop infection. The important thing, though, for viewers to know is that it looks like the vaccines the country is using is able to uh, protect against severe disease and death. Um, and, and of course, that is very important yeah. uh, for all of us, both individually and on a public health basis. So, so you're saying they compare in terms of efficacy? They, they're almost Correct. on a par. They're Obviously, the, there will be differences, but, but almost. Yeah, they're... Exactly. They're in the same ballpark, um, you know, the 70s to 85 percent. Um, and I think that's that's really very important for us all to know, because clearly we need to keep our health care worker force, um, you know, maintained and on its feet. And and that's really was always the, the reason behind the Sasanki yeah. um program. It, it's interesting to know because after Delta, maybe the uh, breakthrough infections were, were coming through and we were reporting at one stage that some healthcare workers actually wanted to move over to Pfizer. So uh, for whatever reason, Johnson & Johnson was getting a bad rap. It seemed to be uh, less effective. Could this, this change things uh, or that perception, this, this latest study? 
I mean, I hope so. You know, I think this perception has been a little bit unfortunate. I think some of it has come out of North America, where for whatever reason, and I think some of that may be nationalism, there has been a very strong uh, favor towards the mRNA vaccines. And of course, they, you know, they have a large manufacturing uh, mandate in terms of the mRNA vaccines. Um, I think it's been somewhat unfortunate for the AD26 vaccine. Uh, it's an important vaccine because, as you know, we are also now filling and finishing that vaccine right here in this country. And it is going to be a key vaccine for this continent. So we felt there was a lot of reason to quickly show that um, people need to restore their faith in the vaccine. After all, at the end of the day, it what counts is how it works, right? Our perceptions can change. Yeah. What is important to know is, does it work? And I think that's what this data shows. We are, of course, continuing to monitor this. It's important we show durability. And so we hope even within the next week or so, we'll be updating that data. And I, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic that this is going to hold fast and we're going to see a, a, an ongoing durable response um, of this particular vaccine. Uh, let's hope so. And that would be good news for Aspen, like you say, finishing the, the products here um, with big plans for, for Africa. Finally, so, so you mentioned that the boosters weren't available for a very long time. So we shouldn't be worried about the fact that um, apparently more than half the health workers in this study uh, had been administered booster shots. So, so they're not hesitant to go and get the, the boosters or is that a possibility? Well, to be honest, you know, we offered all 500,000 individuals the opportunity to boost, and we were a little bit disappointed that we made 50% um, of that target. I, I do hope that this data encourages that other half uh, to quickly move forward and get themselves boosted. I think, you know, as healthcare workers, we do ourselves a great deal of favor to make sure that our protection is as good as possible. And we know that these top ups are working and do provide added protection. And so the message is if you decided to wait and hedge your bets and think about this, um, maybe now you, you will feel more confident about going forward. You can do so. Uh, there is still opportunity, even within the Sasanki program, uh, to get along to a vaccine centre and get yourself boosted. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Director of the Desmond Tutu HIV Centre and Health Foundation, Professor Linda Gale Becker. Let's take a short break.